friends! Welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and I am so excited that you are here during our unit of Artsy Science for Sciency Art. Now we have lots of fun things in this unit so you should check out our YouTube channel if you're looking for more ideas. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos as they're coming out. And you can always support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. Today we are going to make a zoetrope and that is a cool way to sort of make an animation and what it looks at is our visual refresh rate. So our eyes can take in information, but when the light comes into our eyes and it shines on the back to make that image, and then we send it through our optical nerve into our brain so that we can process it and I can say, oh, I'm looking at a camera right now. It can't do that all of the time. It takes time for that message to get sent and for the brain to process it. And so that's what we call our visual refresh rate. It's sort of that time on how quickly can we look at new images. And if we create new images faster than our brain can process them, it looks like regular motion. So that's how films work and that's also how our zoetrope works. What we are going to do, what you need today, is you need a printout of our little zoetrope template. You need a marker, a sharpie of some sort, is gonna be really nice so you can see it really well. You need some scissors, a pencil, and a CD, or is what's gonna make it up, and then we're gonna put it together with some tape. Now, this zoetrope, when you choose what you're gonna make as your moving image, we're gonna spin it so it's gonna repeat itself. You wanna choose something easy, so you probably don't wanna draw tiny things in here because when you're looking through it, it's gonna change so quickly your eyes won't be able to see it. So I thought it would be kind of fun for my zoetrope, I'm going to make a little smiley face that winks. Now you're gonna draw your picture as it's changing in these white boxes, all right? And the bottom is sort of the bottom of the white boxes. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to draw my little face. You wanna try to keep it the same size through it all. So I'm gonna draw all of my circles first, and then I'll draw my little winky eye. Now, if you wanted, you can make like a ball that bounces around in there. You could try to make a person that walks from one side to the other. I'm gonna put happy faces in all of these. If you're on a computer, before you could print it out, you could make a project of creating the same thing. You could reprint it all and copy and paste that same image to see things. All right, so now I sort of have all of my smiley faces ready. I want the beginning and the end to look the same. So they're gonna have some big eyeballs on them. I want my middle one to have a winky eye. So I'm gonna have one eyeball that's normal and a total wink. I'm gonna do that in the next one too. So now I've sort of got my beginning and my ending, and I, over the course of these, I'm gonna make that one eye just a little bit smaller or just a little bit bigger. In fact, I can put in my one of my eyes first, and then I can just sort of make it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can kind of see how I'm slowly getting that one eye smaller till it winks. Now I'm gonna slowly make that one eye bigger until it's all ready. So let's put in this eyeball again, just like that. And we're gonna get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and almost normal size. So you can see how if I were to play these quickly, I would have this strip where you would start to see it wink at you. Now the trick is we need to make this go so quickly in front of our eyes that it will actually look like our little smiley faces winking. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna put it around a CD so we can spin it, and as it spins, it's gonna go by really quickly. It'll be faster than our visual refresh rate, so our brain will interpret it as just a normal moving thing, just like I see somebody walking across the street. Now, we do need to make some blockers, which is what these guys are for, these actual slits. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna cut around the entire rectangle. And there's two of them you'll notice here. So we're gonna cut all the way around this rectangle. Just like this. And then we're gonna fold it in half backwards. So 
So we'll take this one and we're gonna fold it in half backwards. All right, just like this. And it almost looks like a piano with some keys. And then the next step is we're gonna cut these keys out. All right, so now we need to cut out our keys. And that's gonna be the little slit that our eyeball can see in. And so then we can see those pictures, one and then the other and then the other. And it will show up, that picture will show up in the same spot each time because our slit is in the same spot relative to our picture. So we're just gonna take a moment and cut these all out. All right, there's one. We're gonna do the same thing to the other one and then I'll show you how to put our zoetrope together. my pieces now all ready. I'm going to tape these two together because I want to make sure that my two blinky eyes go together and because I want my tape to be kind of hidden I'm actually going to open it up and then put my tape there. You'll notice I printed mine double-sided and that's totally okay if you had done that too because we flip it we fold it backwards and you won't be able to see it in the end. So now we're going to tape it together so that these pieces you're right next to each other. Just a little piece of tape. If you have clear tape, you can do this on the outside. I just don't happen to have the clear tape with me today. All right, so I have this one nice, beautiful, long thing. And the way that we're gonna put it on is we're actually going to make a circle with our drawings on the inside. Okay, that's really important. We don't wanna go on the outside like this. We wanna make sure our drawings go on the inside of our zoetrope. And we're gonna take that into a nice little loop. So I'm gonna just sort of open mine up again and tape it in the loop right there. Tape it, and remember our things are gonna go on the inside, just like this, and we'll sort of tape this part together, just like that. So it's sort of almost like a little crown, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape it around our CD. My CD has a bunch of stuff on one side. I'm gonna tape it so that the flat mirrored side is up. And you're just gonna gently tape it around that CD. So that's gonna hold it nicely in place. You need a bunch of like sort of little skinny pieces of tape to make that work really well for you. 
And so you just sort of start in one spot like this. I'm going to put the CD all the way inside. And then, oops, we'll start with one piece. The starting is always the trickiest part. Once you get it started, it's a little easier. Put a piece of tape down here. I'm going to tape it in onto one part of the CD. Now before I tape it all the way around the CD, I'm going to go flip it over and tape the other side in directly opposite. And that sort of helps ensure that I don't find out that after I tape, I've got sort of everything wrapped too tightly around the CD and then a little bump at the end. Don't quite want that. So I'm going to tape this piece in here. And this sort of just holds that stuff in place. And just do the best. You want to eyeball it so that they're sort of right opposite of each other. I'm going to do the same thing so that I have four pieces and sort of quarters that are helping me wrap around the CD. You can see that's already sort of coming together. And now I'm going to just add a little bit more. All right, so I'm just gonna slowly tape this on a little bit better. Just like this. And so this time, this part just takes a little bit of time and patience. We always strive for our best possible job. It doesn't ever have to be perfect. Always remember that. It's okay if it's not. All right. All right, so here I have my awesome little zoetrope. You can see the smileys on the inside. And if I'm looking like this, I can sort of see it's like these fingers that are blocking. I can look down here and I can almost see it already happening just by moving my hand. But if I really want it to be easier to use, I'm going to use the pencil and insert it right here in the middle of that CD piece. Now, if you want to, you could use a piece of cardboard and sort of cut the cardboard accordingly for the hole and then punch this through the cardboard hole. But if you don't happen to have that, what you can do is I like to just go for the best you can do. And here, like what you can do is you can actually wrap the tape around, sort of a fun little useful trick like this. And you can do that from a whole bunch of different angles and that will get your pencil to stay in the spot that you want it to stay in. So if you don't have cardboard in your recycling bin or something like that, this is a great way to do it. And you'll just need more tape, but it's totally a fun little tricky way Go from all different angles, you secure it in all different ways, and it gives it a little bit more structure. I always enjoy trying to find new ways to get something to hold on because that's what engineers and scientists, that's what they do, right? They have to find new things, for whatever they're going for. And just like four or five of those pieces should hold it really well for you. I just love that it's a one less supply piece that you might need. And then if I want to be really strong, I can also tape over the tops of all these pieces too. But you can see that this is actually pretty strong and now I can spin this in my hand. And if you look down through it, you'll see your little thing moving. And I can see my little guy blinking and opening its eyes, which is kind of fun. This is a really fun way to learn about our visual refresh rate and also do a little bit of art. You can do as many as you want and see how detailed can you get? How thick do the lines need to be for your eyes to be able to pick that up? Or can you do colors? What happens if you do colors? Is it easier or harder? So these are all sorts of fun things that you can do as you make your zoetrope and you can make a whole bunch of them and tell all sorts of different stories. Thank you so much for joining us today on this quick and easy science project that's also very artsy. We hope that you will join us all week for our artsy science or sciencey art unit. And again, you can always check us out at patreon.com slash rosy research and make sure you hit subscribe to our YouTube videos so that you don't miss one as they come out. Have a great afternoon. Bye friends.